Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, TGIF. If you're like me, you've been counting down for the weekend since Sunday night, okay? So here we are. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we'll be, you know, I'll launch right into it, right? Today we'll be reviewing uh, last night's episode of the Andre Stevens Show, which I like to title the Andre Stevens Experience from here on out, right? And last night's show was, you know, the teacher always has something interesting going on, but last night was epic, right? It was epic. And for those of you who have not had the opportunity to check out the Andre Stevens experience last night, do yourself a favor, please, and go review that video. But today, as you know, it's a class. And teacher last night was focused on the letter C. You know, in, in grammar school or in grade school, uh, you know, they always have a letter that they focus on in either A, you know, through the alphabet. So last night was the letter C. And so C stood for uh, crab legs, colloquialism, currency, and controversy okay and those were the topics for last night so before i get right into it please like share subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend this is the jamaican ladies chat room where you neither have to be jamaican or a lady to join us to share your thoughts and ideas uh, i am your hostess with the mostest and I'm here to give you some common sense commentary on things happening in social media and, um, you know, this popular culture and where those two things often intersect. So with that being said, you know, show your girl some love, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and let's jump right into it, okay? So... For those of you who are into either watching vlogs or are vloggers yourself, you know the bonus that the the epic iconic moment that transpired last night on the Andre Stevens experience, right? And it it appears that it began earlier in the day where you had two um you know, two radio personalities, one named Triple X and one named Danique, right? And a lot of you Western Jamaicans are familiar with, maybe familiar with who Danique is, the Danique. Her name is Danique, right? And so they recently got on this te uh, radio network um, and were giving their opinions on another incident that happened uh, at a local high school in Jamaica where, you know, there was a student who was threatening to jump off the building. So Andre Stevens being the, you know, astute social commentary, uh, personality that he is, he went there, you know, he's all about social justice. He's all about, um, you know, getting to the bottom of some of, you know, the issues facing Jamaica, whether it be social, political, economic. So he, you know, was on site and he was doing his investiga investigatory process. And so these two uh, personalities uh, must have seen that Andre went to the school and so came back to work or was at work and decided to, for less than a you know, lack of a better word, air and Andre out. And they spoke of him very in disparaging ways. They called him the little mad boy. Them call him same handicap. Them, they, they, you know, you name it, they were trying to really, uh, you know, align him with being, you know, less than able-bodied and, you know, question his mental and, and what was so interesting about it is that the primary speaker was the the personality called Triple X, right? And then you had Danique now like seconded the um the conversation and you know they were off to a roaring start. So we didn't know what was going on in a, I, well, I not we. I can tell you I didn't know what was going on because 
I just wait for Andrea night time, right? So when Andrea come on, me and my hubby was actually on the road and you know, must get the notification and then I go to the, the, the link and then I say Andre sit on with him red turban. So I say worries tonight because you know so one and once Andre catch a hat or catch a turban is gonna be like a hot sizzling program, right? And then he's sitting there, the music is going. And then um, he said, you know, go go get your peoples because it's gonna be it's gonna be bangarang tonight. And you know, so once Andre tell us that a bangarang I go on, hey, go catch a seat. So at which point I'm telling my husband, like, listen, we gotta hold on a minute because I like to watch Andre ha as it's happening, right? Because from time to time I do call into the show and give my opinion on certain topics. So when it's going to be like a hot situation, you know, or he gives us, you know, a heads up that it's going to be interesting, I I want to be there. I want to watch it live. I don't want to rewatch it later or whatever the case may be. So sure enough, um I'm I'm listening. I see Andre sitting there cool as a cucumber, music a play, and then he starts playing this video. And it's a vid, the video of the two tele, radio personalities disparaging him. And it, he did it. It was a classic moment because there you have Andre patiently sipping his tea, right? And in this case, his tea was water, right? His, he was just sipping from his bottle of water. And um, he's letting us listen to these two individuals refer to him as the mad boy the the first in um triple x was like me know him name me know him name first of all everybody know andre everybody know andre name right me know him name me know the little mad boy and everything and then he starts to clarify by saying well it's not mad in the the traditional sense of what because he caught himself right away from him said the little mad boy right it's like he realized what he said and he says not mad in the colloquialism uh context right and there's another c right context right um but mad as it you know pertains to how we and, and he goes on to put his definition and contextualize his meaning for mad or um in 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 his conversation right and then no you hear um denny come in now and said to him said she interjects and she says well um and before on start call up you because right away these two people recognize that what they're saying and how they're describing andre could be problematic right so she now starts to add some disclaimer saying before you guys call up here she then rubber stamps the comments by saying well um he deserves it that andre deserves to be categorized in this way right so triple x then goes on to say oh andre too enough andre too enough no for in let me just say let's stop right there you see when people love to refer to people as nuff it usually means they're close to finding out something that they don't want them to know or they might see or hear something that they don't want them to know that's what i've grown to understand when people say you're too nuff right because there are people that's nosy and love to be in other people's business but for the most part you it is ridiculous to refer to andre as enough right because you have a whole slew, you have people all around the world that's made their career investigative journalism right and it has nothing to do with being enough it has to be usually you know associated with you trying to uncover information that will be beneficial to your audience that is the end all be all top middle and bottom line to investigative journalism period right so the idea of him being too enough right away i started realizing hey 
this seems like there's more to this situation because hold them just pick andre out of all the things that have happened in jamaica and all the people that's been present to report the story all of a sudden andre is a problem because he was there right so um andre is letting the video play and once the video uh finished plays playing what me tell us say that's where it really went in a whole different zone because andre then puts up a picture right of the the triple x who was the primary com person offering commentary a class him and a style him Andre puts up a picture of Triple X. It's not a picture, it's a mugshot. Puts up Triple X's mugshot and, and announces to us that Triple X was actually arrested in America several years back for stealing crab legs. When I tell you, sir, I nearly pass out. I, I still want to laugh. I still, I'm going to laugh till I'm going to cry. Because Andre and um, Andre's producer did it in such a classic way, right? He, you let your detractors have their say, right? And then you hit them. They're throwing stones and you're, you're going to throw back a few bricks. So when you know you, you've come fully loaded to the the, the 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 argument or the, the 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 fight or the debate you just let your detractors say what they have to say because you know you have several aces in your pockets to play in this poker game and sure enough andre dropped the 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 one that ended it all which was the fact that this man was came to walmart in the united states and thief crab legs child me nearly pass up me tell you something i laugh me laugh, me laugh i could not believe it because the irony the irony first of all you could clearly tell that the reason why andre became a topic on this particular station is because this station is being uh, associated with a particular political party down there people have noticed that you know people affiliated with this party seem to have you know easy access to the station uh they're always interested in their issues and promoting their you know talking points so they knew that there was more to andre being picked as you know being too enough and being the mad boy and being this and style all types of way it was a way to lower his prestige amongst their their listeners right so the irony of you, then you and Denny, Triple S and Denny, then deciding to to move forward with this narrative of styling up Andre, and then you have so many, you have this this big elephant that's in the room, or these big crab legs that's in the room that people know about, and here comes Andre with the information. It was just. I, it, it was just a moment in vlogging history that will, I, for me, will never be forgotten. There are so many lessons in that. The takeaway from that is one, you can't come to a battle, a war with, with your pencil. Not even a knife, you come there with a pencil. Because these names that Andre have been called, was called by Triple X. He's been called these things before right people have used that it's a ready um tool that they go to in their supposed arsenal of weapons against andre stevens right so this is nothing that's you know earth shattering for him he's already ready for you he already has a response when it comes to people trying to malign him and especially attack his mental uh situation or attack you know but them calling him handicapped that was the word that was used last night that he looked handicapped and they said it in a very derogatory way um 
has a lot of consequences, right? It, it's going to have far-reaching consequences. Um, I, I just thought that whomever asked them to, you know, go on air and say these things clearly set them up. To me, it, it first of all, Nationwide has clearly become a parody of itself, right? They remove Miss Kitty, they remove Empress Golding, two substantive uh, commentators or personalities on their show to put forth Triple X and, and um, Denny. I don't know if they wanted a younger, hipper, you know, more, you know, I don't know, savvy... To, to, to reach a different audience group. I don't, I, I don't know what the, the motive was with doing that, but clearly um, it's not successful because people want substance. I mean, we, we can all do fun and games and jokes, and that's the beauty of Andre. He, you can get all of that he ranges the gamut in terms of being culturally funny and, you know, being on top of, you know, what your grandmother used to say and what you're used to hear your granny say. And then now he can also merge that with being with intellect and, you know, a bro a knowledge on a broad range of topics. So you get all of that in one. Nationwide, on the other hand, have now you know separated or you know separated from two people that were very uh substantive on their program and brought forth now Denik and the crab leg guy right mr crab <laughs> for those of you who did not see it, go and go watch it it was hilarious right and then now you had the audience that Kate called in. You had Andre receive over a thousand missed calls last night, right? But you had viewers, Andre's viewers who called in, who also had information on um, Mr. Crab Legs as well as Denny. And we're just putting everything out there. So this is what as the 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 idea of when you live in glass house you, you can't even throw a pebble you can't even throw a leaf much as a pebble because jamaicans are one that will air you out right and all of them dirty laundry all of them problems was on full display pin out one by one upon the line last night right you hear all kind of descriptions <laughs> leveled against triple x the crab leg guy you hear him as a nasty swatty um uh junk um me hear things when me not hear since me there on my grandmother and my great grandmother me hear description that's that that <laughs> bro sis when i tell you i was i i could not believe it i was cracking up so hard you hear me but i say all that to say that jamaica is interesting in terms of celebrity we're 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 more our celebrities are more reachable to us we're more um i know social media in terms of international celebrity makes us more in touch with what's going on with those people that we associate as being celebrities but um in you, Jamaica and the Caribbean is a unique situation because we've always had access to our celebrities. Our celebrities were never that far away from us. It's only an island this big. So you can go certain places and run into your celebrity. And not only that, you know their business because there's only but so many degrees of separation on that island. So you know, you always know somebody who knows somebody who know them or you know them and then you hear the good and you also hear the bad them as they call it the dirty story and so Danique ended up getting caught up as well because then they started speaking to her marriage some of her situations they started speaking to it's like all bets were off once they came for Andre all bets were off and people really started leveling all sorts of 
descriptions, accusations, allegations against Triple X. But a lot of them were so hysterical. They were hysterical. Um, I was surprised at Danique because Danique has further this image of herself of being Miss Love and Light, right? Where she's vibrating on a whole different frequency. I was very shocked to hear her, you know, talking about somebody being mad. I mean, I understand she has a job to do. And in that job, you know, I, I don't know what the requirements are. But I'm not sure if one of those requirements is to support uh, denigrating someone who is clearly um, and using a context such as uh, able or disability to... Um, in a negative way as a description, you know? And I'm sure the, the Civil, Liberty, Civil Liberties Union, I know, well, I know we, up in America, they call it the American Civil Liberties Union and the, you know, those organizations that support people with disabilities. I'm sure those people in the diaspora, as well as those on the island are going to have a big problem with what, you know, was said on the program, right? But, the fact that the names what I'm called triple X. Now the interesting thing that happened as well within less than five or six minutes of Andre going into speak after he plays the video and Andre now starts speaking on triple X. Triple X Colleen. Triple X was on the line, honey. Now, first of all, Andre had a thousand missed calls last night, but Triple X was the first person that called him. Where they do that at? Where they do? That was a classic vlogging moment. And for all you vloggers out there, you guys know what I mean. Classic vlogging moment. Because then he opened the door even wider for us to really class him and when i say us i mean the audience that really had a problem with what he said about andre and not only that then andre got to have this one-on-one -on -one, you know back and forth with him and triple x's concern on that phone call was that he did not want the need to be dragged into it and uh, conversations about her marriage or whatever else they may have had on her to be, you know, exposed to the to the world, right? And at which point you can't throw a stone and then call then and lick somebody and then you're going to mitigate the response. You you can't tell somebody now what's on limits or what's off limits once them lick you right if you if if once them lick if you're gonna box them kick them thump them whatever you at which point opened yourself to being you know retaliated against because a uh, you started a uh, you come here a uh, you left from which part you there for come drag the man out and if the neek had you know said oh my you know did said something to really downplay what was happening or even play the good cop to triple x's bad cop in that moment i think the situation would be different but because she also got involved and uh doubled down and seconded uh triple x's um description of andre those derogatory remarks that he made i think it just really left her open to be spoken of and for her business to be put out there. And so they were talking about her marriage. They were talking about, um, you know, and, and I just feel that there's more to come from this situation. But when I tell you, I, it was classic. It was iconic. It was a moment in vlogging history and Jamaican vlogging history that you you can't make this up you could not make this up because when them talk about the, the say him is a crab leg thief and miss a crab legs and the the dirty junk crow and the swarty this and the um they described him in every which way they called him everything last night but a child of god okay 
and it's so so emblematic of what happens in life and you know i always say where is the lesson in this right that's always my thing where is the lesson in this number one lesson and it's a classic lesson we hear from with small when you live in a glass house you can't chew a stone when you live in a glass house you can't chew a stone you can't even throw a pebble over there when you surrounded by glass because people might throw a boulder back to really flatten you all right number two we no longer live in an age where you can throw a lick and hide your hands after you do it we no longer live everything is public knowledge now everything is public information so you can't uh do something and then hide your hands after you do it i.e you know reference referencing people as being handicapped as being mad as being this you can't do that anymore because the internet is undefeated everything is out there for a permanent public record right so the ramifications that come from them using this language to describe andre and let me just say when they were saying things like the handicap boy and the mad boy you know there was other words that they wanted to use to describe him I knew that. I felt that way. It's my opinion. I felt that there were other words that they actually wanted to use to describe Andre that others have used before, but they were still trying to work within that border of not crossing certain lines, not offending certain classifications of people, right? So they just decided, if I'm going to offend people, let me just offend the handicapped people or the mad people, right? And that's going to come back to bite them without question. There will be far reaching consequences with regards to what transpired yesterday and last night. The next lesson that comes out of it is um, you have to, when you're, when you're giving a, given a job or a responsibility, you have to up define your own borders and your own boundaries inside or even you have to step into that role even with your own boundaries and your own standards and your own sense of ethics even outside of what your boss has or your supervisor or your that person hires you to do because if you don't you can get into trouble because a lot of people do things because they're getting paid to do it right they don't even think my boss asked me to do something and so i have to do it because my boss asked me to do it not factoring in their own standards and their own belief systems and their own moral approaches to life right and so i said whoever asked triple x and denny to do that to target Andre really did them a disservice. And because they they were it because it, it appears that this is their first broadcasting jobs. I knew of Denny to be a budding singer, right? And you know, she was off a of woman power and 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 things like that. I, I I think she's a recent divorcee. I think she had so much more to offer than the role that they placed her in on that show. And because again, people are short sighted and still caught up in their own ignorance. This is the result right? He also used a word though, you know, again, that disclaimer, it's just um, the cultural, collo the, the colloquialism context that we're using it in. If you had any sense that the, the Lord blessed you with, you would know there is no longer, in a Jamaica people use, oh, the mad, this, the, we're in a different time now. That's why they hired you, right? That's that's why that company hired them to bring apparently a fresh take on news and on 
you know information and 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 public um current events right so you should know that we're in a different age and a different time even on jamaica even in jamaica even in the diaspora and so certain word usage no longer has a place in any context so there's no disclaimer you can put on calling somebody handicapped and calling somebody mad especially on a platform as the one you have and to have that be um excused in any fashion you know that's not gonna work at all but my said did the people them class them last night my tell you, sir, all my cancer is go watch it it was a classic moment and another lesson another even bigger lesson is how god will use your enemies to bless you let me say that again for those of you out there who because it's it's foolish for us to live in this world and not realize no matter how nice you are no matter how good your intentions are no matter all the the the, the positive positivity you offer and emit right you're always going to have detractors you're always going to have that one, two, ten, twenty people who say, Me not like she, me not like him, me not, me not know why, me just not like them. But it's what they do with that dislike that becomes important, right? If you stay from afar and not like me, that's one thing. But when you're going to leave out of your way enough to come verbally attack me or, or, or you know, you know, speak of me in derogatory ways. Because once them can get you, you know, keep in mind, when them can get you, the first thing they're going to try to do enough, they can't get you personally, they're going to try and come for your reputation. That's the number one thing people do. When them can lick you, them can beat you, them are going to try to come for your reputation. And so them coming and, and trying to label him and stigmatize him ended up backfiring. And it immediately it went from 6,000 people watching to 8,000 people watching immediately it it served to really assign more credibility to andre and recognize just how many people are there out there are you know concerned about what he's doing to the depths of trying to malign him and um you know label him as being somehow unstable and somehow you know with other physical or mental disabilities but the, the 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 point was how that backfired it backfired as it was happening right god will use your enemies for bless you because i know it was a great he he ha ha moment that ended up now might have serious legal ramification and will therefore help to really solidify Andre's credibility. Right? It was just a classic moment. It was just classic. Right? The last thing we're gonna talk about is currency. That's the last C. So we talk about colloquialism, we talk about context, we talk about crab legs. First of all, who really got a one store got thief crab legs? Walmart. Wh why crab legs? That's what me that really like to know. Why crab legs? What was it about the crab legs that was calling your name, sir? I don't I don't get it. And after you thief crab legs, how you go and it's it's known. How you really are gonna come and try to come for somebody or drag somebody when you know you have crab legs and your mugshot in your closet. But tell us that some people are so anxious to get at you and put you down that they throw caution to the wind. They don't even consider their own weaknesses. Information that other people may have on them. They're just so fixated in attacking you that they leave themselves vulnerable as well 
And a lot more people need to use that as a lesson. Let me say that again. Some people are so anxious and ready to attack you that they end up leaving themselves more vulnerable to retaliation and reprisal because they're not thinking. And an experienced broadcaster would have known that. Like I said, whoever boosted them up to do it did them a disservice, right? But let's go now to the currency. So we did crab legs, we did context, we did the um, <laughs> colloquialism. And for those people, colloquialism means like something you use uh, that is uh, terminologies and word choices that you use that is not usually included in like formal liter literary expressions that they're usually used amongst people that are familiar or you know a, within a closed group so let me just clarify which is another c let's clarify that there was no context that you can use as a cover to add as a disclaimer to you using disabilities to classify the see them are flying to classify someone else currently the way the current social strata is set up now where those those things just no longer apply they're no longer appropriate it's 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 it was an error of epic proportions for you to do that as a radio professional right so we'll go through all of that currency and i'm gonna wrap this up real quick because i know you guys gotta go get your friday on yes baby i'm about to go have some brunch well, maybe it's a little late for lunch, but I'm gonna get something. I need a little margarita. Forget this. The weekend started, right? You feel me? But uh, currency. There's this idea now that because of all of these bank robberies and ATM robberies going on in Jamaica, someone is um, introducing the idea of why don't we go to uh, you know paperless or digital currency instead. To that, I say. You, for no reason is or in no instance is Jamaica ready for a move like that for no reason and in no instance is Jamaica ready to go to a paperless or you know to stick to digital currency because here's the thing, thief can thief the paper money and them can also thief the digital money. It's nothing that's going to prevent, you know, any and or reduce theft in any way if the, someone really wants that money. We see the situation with SSL where so many people were robbed of their money. And guess what? They weren't, you didn't have stick up kids at the um, ATM waiting for the Brinks truck to pull up and so they can juke them down for the money. No, you had someone inside that was taking that money. So that's not going to alleviate anything in terms of theft. What you really need to do is one, make people less likely to want to steal that money by making the country more financially stable, paying your civil servants you know addressing the needs of, of of your constituency so that they will be less likely to feel desperate enough to want to take the money to or 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 uh enable people or act as co-conspirators because i find it so difficult that there was a police station up the street but yet and still there was a shootout in broad daylight and no police was on the scene until a, a good while or after at the last robbery they had, the last ATM juke down that they had. So if you really want to do something to, um, you know, 
prevent these type of things from happening. Start at the, the, the core reasons as to why people will feel like they need to steal. And that is lack of resources, right? Lack of good jobs, lack of good pay. Desperations bring these things. Stop feeling that you're going to go into Haiti where Jamaica now is just steps away from becoming Haiti, but you're now sending, wanting to send soldiers into Haiti to help them. Why don't you do a trial run in Jamaica first and put those measures in place that's going to offer more security for these businesses that are doing large monetary transaction offer security for these drivers that are transporting you know all these large amount of funds putting uh policies and 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 resources in place that's going to really help to alleviate some of these financial burdens that your constituency as a country have and let me just say this just another c right consist constituency let me just say this there's this there's this idea in Jamaica that when your prime minister or in other countries too basically you only tend to your constituents the whole country regardless of who voted for you the whole country now becomes your constituents it's not just the people that voted for you is your constituents you still have an obligation and a responsibility to make sure the entire country benefits from your presidency or your prime ministership right and you have the opportunity to turn people's um perspectives and perceptions of you around so even if i did not vote for you the benefits that you implement and the, the policies you implement that can be beneficial to me can make me a voter for you in the next election but because we're polarized and we're 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 you know you know have these these depths of separation you either labor right or your pmp and if your pmp monago really help your community because you never vote for me is nonsensical but i feel it's ridiculous to even introduce the conversation about um you know digital currency a lot of our people are not even you know technologically ready for anything like that much less there's no structure in place there's no um, we have serious issues with our financial oversight with regards to banking uh you know come on that's a fufu argument let's just take that off the table right now and come up with some real strategies on how we can offer national security, uh, local security and safety. There's so many steps that we need to resolve before we even think about any sort of, you know, paperless society in terms of currency. But back to crab legs. I don't think that man will ever ever live that down <laughs> i don't think so and i just want to encourage you once again that if you you know did not watch the andre stevens experience last night do yourself a favor and go watch it because me i go watch it again me have to at least watch that intro again that intro was a classic which is another c our letter for the day boys and girls <laughs> okay in a teacher class is the letter c all right and we're going to reiterate once again what c is for c is for classic c is for crab legs c is for conspiracy c is for controversy c is for colloquialism c is for context Things that clearly, you know, Triple X and, and Denny did not consider before they took to the airwaves and made their disparaging commentary yesterday. All right. But we might come back again later. But depending on how the weekend go, I might not. Right. 
But um, it and oh, you know what? Yes, man, come on, cause Moan talk to one about Lori Harvey. I want to have a girl talk. It's been a while since I had a, a a little girl talk. So um, I'm gonna come back either later or tomorrow, and we'll talk about Lori Harvey and her breakup with Damson Idris, Idris, and how that you know some of the takeaways that we can gather as ladies and gentlemen, right? So. Much love to y'all. Love you. I, I see my subscribers are growing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Like me telling you, I just feel like I have my own little click. And we can just come and just chit chat and reason what you know. And we can sit on and cook up a foot and talk. And I never have to ring the doorbell. Or I never have to. Me and I'm a care. <laughs> we never have to do that. You can just walk in you know get us something to drink and make you a little hors d'oeuvres and we sit on and chat and share thoughts and ideas and i appreciate you guys so much there's no words to really ex you know express just how much it means to me that you take time out of your day to come and listen to what i have to say drop your comments below and um me sooner look more walk good